Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for attending today. Um, welcome to our third CGS lecture for fall 2023. Uh, my name is Reginald Jackson, professor in the Department of Asian Languages and Cultures here at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. And it is my distinct pleasure to be able to welcome you all here today um, for Professor Hajime Hasegawa's lecture. Um, before we begin with the lecture, I would like to um, give you a few announcements, some general announcements. So first of all, um, please join us two weeks from now for the next lecture in the fall 20, 2023 CGS um, Thursday lecture series, uh, The Power of the Pad, Menstrual Products, and Embodied... Oh, sorry. Okay. Femininity in Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Right, let's try this. There we go. Let's we'll do it that way. Um, given by uh, our, uh, Dr. Morris Stevens Chu, one of our two 2023-24 postdoctoral fellows at the Center of Jap for Japanese Studies here at Michigan. Uh, this next lecture will be on the 10th floor of Weiser Hall instead of in this room. For those attendees joining the webinar, um, webcams and microphones have been muted, but we do invite you to use the Q&A function during the lecture to submit any questions you have and the presenters will try to address as many of these as possible. Um, the live transcription or closed caption will be enabled, but if you would rather not have that, then just go to the bottom right corner and disable it. Um, also, um, please check out our CGS events page um, uh, at slash uh, U of M or various social media for CGS lectures scheduled in fall of 2023. All right. So, Today, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Hajime Hasegawa, um, who will be giving us a talk uh, called The Theme Park of Nuclear, an Exhaustive Survey on Nuclear Power Plant Visitor Centers in Post-Fukushima, Japan. Dr. Hajime Hasegawa is CGS's 2023-24 visiting scholar. He's a professor of media studies at Meiji Gakuin University in Tokyo, and his fields are media theory and cultural sociology. Dr. Hasegawa received his PhD from the Graduate School of Interdisciplinary Information Studies at the University of Tokyo, and he's committed to several projects and authored many publications, including monographs such as Media Studies for Publishing and Knowledge, A History and Regeneration of Editorship from Mizu Sushobo in 2003, and Everyday Life as Attraction, Dancing Machinery with Body um, from 2009, as well as How Can We Hope, I'm sorry, How We Can Hope in the Disney Landing Society, um, Games of Technology and Body from 2014. Um, Dr. Hasegawa is also a prolific presenter, having given talks such as Disneyland Kasuru Shakai de Kibo wa Ikani Katari Uruka, Technology to Shintai no Yugi from 2014, as well as Fake, Fact, or Form, a Critical Examination of Media Literacy in the Age of Post Truth with Trumpism from 2021. He's also presented um, more broadly um, uh, on topics such as education uh, in the presentation, Education, concili Conciliation, or Entertainment, a study on nuclear power plant visitor centers in post-Fukushima, Japan, um, which today's talk is also related to. Hasegawa-san stayed with us uh, as a CGS visiting scholar from 2017 to 18, and he is now visiting again, uh, and we're thrilled to have him back. Well, one reason is that my personally, I'm happy to have him back, is that he's a genuinely curious, kind, and independent critical thinker. Uh, he's incredibly self-sufficient and does things like driving around Alaska uh, and the continental U.S. to study car culture, in addition to getting in touch uh, during the summer of 2020 to check in and express concern over the police killings of Black Americans during um, that uh, terrible time. Beyond this, he's really knowledgeable about music. He's a huge Curtis Mayfield fan. Um, which makes him close to my heart. Um, and more uh, recently, he's been kind enough um, to really try to integrate himself into the larger CGS community. He's um, visiting my classes and um, being awkward uh, with the rest of us and dancing, no, and contributing, and has really done a great job of mentoring graduate students as well in his, in his time. Um, and given his wide breadth of interests and expert kind of ranges of expertise, he's been really great and generous um, that way, and I'm really uh, appreciative. Very few times is there a visiting professor um, who's um, as integrated or as kind of committed to being a part of a larger community as someone like Dr. Hasegawa, so I'm grateful for that, and I really want to kind of highlight that as part of what makes him special in addition to being a brilliant cultural critic. So um, 
This is all to say that his wide skill set as a thinker and his generous intellectual energy is exactly what we want to cultivate here at CGS. So please join me in welcoming for today's talk, Dr. Hajime Hasegawa. Uh, thank you, Professor Jackson, for the warm introduction, and thank you to the CGS staff, uh, especially Alexis, yuri -san, and Julian. Uh, I appreciate all of you for joining us today. It's a great honor for me to have this opportunity. Um, now, everyone, here is a frog. Uh, as you know, we call we can call him a Yurukara in recent Japanese expression. What do you think of him? Is he cute or not? Cute, oh really? <laughs> uh, in Japan, so you can find mascots like him standing here and there. You may have seen another frog mascot similar to this one standing in front of. Uh-huh. No? It's just a little quiet. Uh -huh. Hi, can you hear me? Great. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, in Japan, you can find a mascot like him standing here and there. You may have seen another frog mascot similar to this one standing in front of a pharmacy. This mascot has been placed in front of a pharmacy since 1963. Sorry, uh, 63. Yeah, by Coa, a pharmaceutical company, to advertise their products. I used to see the, these mascots in the street when I was a child, and I still often see them today. The two frogs look very similar. However, while the Kova frog on the right uh, looks like a cute nursery school child in a uniform, the frog on the left is wearing work clothes and looks uh, looks like a middle-aged man uh, or son in English and Japanese ex expressions like myself. Uh, it is not easy to describe this frog as cute, at least for me. Uh, this frog on the left is called Tsukatte mo Tsukairu-kun. Uh, if translated directly into English, it means eternally useful frog. Uh, Tsukatte no Tsukairu-kun is the mascot of Japan Nuclear Fuel, uh, an exceptional company created to commercialize the nuclear fuel cycle. The nuclear fuel cycle is a technology that allows spent nuclear fuel to be reprocess uh, reprocessed uh, and used again. So the name Tsukatte no Tsukairu-kun, eternally useful frog, implies nuclear fuel to for eternity. It is a poor joke, oyaji gag, an old man's gag in recent Japanese expressions. If you visit the PR center of the reprocessing plant in Rokkasho village, Aomori prefecture, you can still see them standing at the entrance. I will tell you about it later. Uh, from the latter half of the 20th century to the present, nuclear power plant has been one of the most critical subjects in Japan and has been the subject of much discourse, especially since the so-called 311. We don't need to explain this anymore. Uh, everything and anything related to nuclear power has been made into a subject and talked about enormously in journalists, academics, and uh, activists, uh, regardless of position or uh, speci uh, speciality. However, what I'm going to talk about today is something other than nuclear power plants. I'm going to talk about nuclear power plant vista centers. In the vast amount of discourse on nuclear power plant in uh, nuclear power in Japan, nuclear power plant visitor centers have been largely overlooked for some reason. A nuclear power plant visitor center is a public relations facility for nuclear power operated by the electric power industry. Have you ever been to any nuclear power plant visitor center before? No? Okay. In every country that has nuclear power plants, 
there must be several nuclear power plant visitor centers. Of course, they are in the United States. In Michigan, for example, a nuclear power plant visitor center at the Cook Nuclear Power Plant on Lake Michigan opened in the mid 1970s and is now closed. Closer to Ann Arbor, beyond Monroe, a nuclear power plant called Enrique Fermi faces uh, Lake Erie. I tried to contact them to see if they have a visitor center here, but was unsuccessful in getting through to them. It may not be for the general public. It seems that nuclear power plant vista centers are shrinking in the United States. Of course, there are nuclear power plant vista centers in Japan, and they are the subject of today's presentation. Please look at the map. Japan still has a significant number of commercial nuclear reactors. At the same time, Japan has one of the world's highest densities of nuclear power plant vista centers. Japan has many nuclear power plant vista centers, depending on how you count down. There are probably more than 30. After 311, the number temporarily decreased, but has since reopened, and new facilities have opened. Yes, in Japan, they are increasing, even after all those nuclear disasters. What is a nuclear power plant visitor center? It is a facility for public relations or advertisement. It is operated by the electric power industry or local governments. A local government is a municipality that hosts nuclear power plants and is at the level of a prefecture. Prefectures may be the equivalent of states in the United States, but the system is entirely different, and the prefecture do not have the independence of states. It tried to uh, reduce people, uh, it, it means uh, nuclear power plant visitor centers, uh, try to reduce people's anxieties and doubts and minimize, minimize, minimize uh, resistance to nuclear power. Encar encouraging society's ac acceptance of nuclear power. Or it is an ideology app apparatus for injecting the ideology of the national nuclear policy into the public. In short, a nuclear power plant vista center is a propaganda apparatus, just like a nuclear advertisement on TV or internet. Propaganda apparatus cons constitutes a discourse Space and work within. There is a discourse space on what is the discourse space on nuclear power in Japan. This photo symbolizes it. Oh, sorry. Let me check the, my slides. Please wait uh, just a moment. Yeah. Yeah. I took this photo on the way to Sendai nuclear power plant in Kagoshima prefecture. Across the road, on the left is a pro nuclear sign and on the right is an anti-nuclear sign. Each side is standing at attention with their arguments. The word nukes is translated into English in the figure, but in the context, for or against refers to the nuclear power plant in front of the locals, not to the military use of nuclear energy. Let me illustrate this. The discourse on nuclear power in Japan can be depicted as a dia diag diagram uh, in which proponents and opponents face off against each other, with nonpartisan caught between the two, and the nonpartisans are criticized by both groups. The three parties are in a three-way deadlock. This figure is the state of nuclear discourse in Japan today. Within these structures, 
uh, sta uh, statements about nuclear power tend to be reduced to uh, binary opposition of being for or against nuclear power, which could further reinforce the three-way deadlock. Some call for a national debate, but no debate comes up. It is unlikely to become an ele uh, election issue and to have an obvious impact on national nuclear policy. Despite the vast amount of discourse that has accumulated, the reality is that little or nothing has changed. Nuclear policy has been strengthened in recent years rather than before. And this is the final goal of my, of my research project, to understand the discourse structure on the nuclear power plants in Japan. In other words, the research should be to elucidate the mechanism of the three-way deadlock in the discourse structure on nuclear in Japan. My first visit to a nuclear power plant visitor center was in May 2012, one year and two months after 311. It was a visitor center for the Oi nuclear power plant in Fukui Prefecture. And this visitor center is now closed. The plant is on the other side of the mountain in the back of the photo. And I thought at that time, it looks like Godzilla is about to appear. Since then, I have been doing field work for more than 11 years. I have visited almost every nuclear power plant visitor center in Japan more than twice, but didn't know what to make sense of it. So I looked at visitor centers in Taiwan, Europe, and the United States. I also went to Kiev, uh, Ukraine, before the war and saw the ruins of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. I like to travel around the world, and during the past 10 years, I have seen many nuclear facilities in various places. I'm the only person in the world today who has visited too many nuclear power plant visitor centers. No one would want to imitate me, though. This project has three final goals as follows. First, to reveal the actual conditions of nuclear power plant visitor centers in Japan. Second, to identify the character characteristics of nuclear power plant visitor centers in Japan compared to those in other countries, especially the United States. Third, by analyzing these nuclear power plant visitor centers, I will reveal some aspects of the structure of nuclear discourse in Japan. I'm currently working on a book about my research in Ann Arbor. Unfortunately, I can't talk about all this, all of this today. In this presentation, I will discuss some of the results of my fieldwork. First, I will report typical examples of nuclear power plant visitor centers in Japan. Those centers may fit our image of propaganda apparatus. But the story is more complex. Sometimes you will encounter the other type of nuclear power plant visitor centers that are not considered as a visitor centers normally. I call them stealth type. I will report on this stealth type as well. Then I would like to evaluate the Japanese nuclear power plant visitor centers, including the stealth type, and describe their char characteristics. As you can see on the map, many nuclear power plant vista centers exist in Japan. This map is my plot, not official one. The official list can be found on the website of the Denjiren, Denki Jigyo Rengo Kai, a lobby group of leading electric power companies, but it is unreliable. I also couldn't find an official definition and a rela uh, rationale for the establishment of the nuclear power plant visitor center. It looks to be pretty lax, but it is an interesting point for me. Nuclear, plant visitor, nuclear power plant visitor centers can be divided into four types. The top two will match the general image of a visitor center. Backend facilities include the lead processing factory for spent nuclear fuel. This type could include visitor centers attached to research institutes. The third, the city installed type 
has things such as a community hall or farmer's market, which may make, which may make you wonder how can such a facility be a visitor center? The fourth, still, is a visitor center that do not have an explicit con connection to nuclear power plants. And a typical example is a day spa. Let's take a look at the slides in this form, this order. First, the visitor centers attached to nuclear power plants of or factories. In Japan, since the end of World War II until recently, there has been an oligopoly of a tiny number of major electric power companies. These power companies own the nuclear power plants. They have invested much money to build large-scale visitor centers at their plants. Uh, let's start with the architecture. The first thing visitors see is the building. This is the Mihama Nuclear Power Plant Visitor Center in Fukui Prefecture. Mihama is one of Japan's oldest commercial nuclear power plants. It is known for transmitting electricity to the site of the World Expo held in Osaka in uh, 1970. The building also features a retro futurist futuristic shape that resembles something from a science fiction movie in 1960s. Here is Genkai Energy Park in Saga Prefecture. It is one of the largest nuclear power plant visitor centers as far as I know. Here is Tontu Village, the village cent uh, visitor center for Higashidori nuclear power plant in Aomori Prefecture. The building is big, but it is in a remote area, far from towns. Until a few years ago, the roads along the way were narrow and inaccessible. It has a visitor center for Onagawa nuclear power plant in Miyagi Prefecture. Located on a cliff on the Rias coast, uh, this place is also not so easy to visit. Here is the Hamaoka Nuclear Power Plant Visitor Center in Shizuoka Prefecture. This is, on the contrary, located just next to the town. Looking at the architecture of these visitor centers, you may have noticed that many have a cylindrical building. This is because they are often based on the motif of a nuclear reactor. Even the interior exhibition is mainly composed of a model of a nuclear reactor. Here is a brochure of uh, the Hamaoka nuclear power plant, visitor center. There is a floor plan in the upper center. The green circle on the left shows a full-scale model of the reactor. Here is the full-scale model of the nuclear reactor at the Hamaoka nuclear power plant, visitor center at the uh, left. Uh, you can see how large it is when compared to people. The use of such huge exhibit to overwhelm the visitor is not limited to recent museums, but is a technique widely seen in temples and monumental architectures from long ago. The photo on the right is a model of a sea wall. It is also a full scale. Near the nuclear reactor model, there is an exhibit of the control room. Lots of buttons and monitors are installed. If you have small kids, you will usually see them pushing buttons around maddeningly. There must be something about a button that makes children want to do so. And it is implying uh, the technology of nuclear power is uh, a little bit um, out of date based on analog uh, technology. Uh, here is a model of a nuclear reactor at Genkai Energy Park. This is also an actual scale one. 
it looks like a giant robot from a gi uh, robot anime. As far as I know, Hamaoka and Genkai are the only two places that have full-scale nuclear reactor models. The structure of the exhibition is the same in all nuclear power plant visitor centers. Since the mechanism of a nuclear power plant is universal, there is no way to make major changes. The logic of the exhibition is also the same. It must be because they need to follow the logic of the government's nuclear power policy. I found it interesting to see why nuclear power is necessary. Usually the explanation is that Japan needs nuclear power because of its lack of natural resources. This has been the argument since the 1960s. However, when I visited the same visitor center a few years later, some exhibits have been changed and global environmental issues have been replaced as a primary rationale. In other words, the rationale for nuclear power could shift occasionally. The term best mix of energy is also often used. In short, it means to balance fossil fuel, renewable power, and nuclear power in a balanced manner. However, it does not indicate who decides on this, on what authority, and on what basis. This is a good example of bureaucratic thinking, where conclusions come first and logic comes later. Of course, there are always exhibits that claim that nuclear power plants are safe. There is always a section on the uh, reuse cycle of spent nuclear fuel and the need for eventual uh, geological disposal. Here is also a corner that appears that they have made such improvements based on the lessons learned from earthquakes such as 311. But there are also problems. For some reason, the exhibits in these corners for reflection and improvement use many technical terms. Many displays look like materials used by engineers at the conferences. How much of this is intended to be understood by the general public? Many of the exhibits are in the form of games and quizzes. Sometimes there are some handmade exhibits, perhaps due to a lack of budget. However, a lot of money has been invested overall. Here is El Gaia, the only nuclear power plant visitor center that is like an attraction in anime, with characters designed it by the famous manga artist Reiji Matsumoto, Matsumoto Reiji. Uh, visitors watch anime images on a monitor in a room that looks like a uh, spaceship's cockpit. Visitor centers have many characters, like Mickey Mouse at Disneyland. The aim is to make visitors feel familiar with the characters. Like Disneyland, there are also robots called audio animatronics. Uh, it is integrated to moving and uh, talking. Here is a visitor center called Alice's Mansion. Uh, although not explicitly stated, it is a fantasy exhibition space borrowed from the world of Alice in Wonderland, the Disney animated film. However, there is no connection between Alice and nuclear power. So it looks very postmodern. It may be a sense of overkill, so it makes the theme of the visitor center promoting nuclear power look false.
It is not clear whether the exhibition of visitor center is aimed at adults or children. It may not have been focused on and is vaguely intended for families. However, families are only seen sometimes during long school vacations such as summer. Only a few visitors come to the visitor centers in the first place. And there are few repeaters. That's strange. It is well known that more than the majority of visitors to Disneyland are repeaters. The exhibition space with the interactive exhibition devices is designed, designed to be a space filled with fun, just like Disneyland. However, upon closer inspection, there are many holes that one would not expect to find in Disneyland such as an equipment left in disrepair and all the exhibits left in place without being updated. And most of all, what is different is that you feel somewhat monitored and soft, uh, soft, uh, so, so, <laughs> I cannot pronounce, <laughs> uh, suffocated. Oh, understand? Okay, thank you. You would never feel at Disneyland. It was especially noticeable when a, when a middle-aged man like me went along to a nuclear power plant visitor center, located with a nice view facing the sea, uh, having a beautifully maintained garden. When I tried to enter there, a security guard rushed out. It didn't. It did not mean that I was not allowed to enter, just monitored. He just walked up to me and uh, kept an, on, an eye on me. What does this mean? The other exam example, after visiting the vis uh, visitor center at Tomari nuclear power plant in Hokkaido, I stopped by at a nearby beach and looked at the ocean. When I turned around, a policeman was there and questioned me. I was just looking at the sea. I want to show you a commemorable photo I took at that time. As you can see, a typical nuclear power plant visitor center is an exhibition space driven by fun like Disneyland. It is a propaganda apparatus mediated by entertainment. However, upon closer inspection, one can see some split, split, splits here and there. The nuclear power plant visitor center may not always work as a propaganda apparatus at face value. The city installed type is partial. Partial means an intermediate form between a typical visitor center and a stealth one. The direct connection to nuclear power becomes less clear on the surface. For example, a city installed type takes the form of a community hall. The photo shows a community hall in Kariwa village in Niigata prefecture, where Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant is located. It is quite a magnificent building. The door says Tepko, Tokyo Denryoku. When I entered the building, the inside looked like a community hall, certainly. While no people were there, there were a few panel displays. The manager came out and looked at me suspiciously. Well, it's okay. That's understandable for me. There was also a building outside the community hall with a sign saying farmer's market. I'm curious to know how long it has been used. Contact Plaza, Fureai Plaza in Japanese, Confi is also in downtown Kashiwazaki. But I don't know what to do here. There is a space with computers in the back and a paper posted on it that says information support corner for the Toho Great Earthquake. It means 311. The nuclear power plant visitor center is in the only shopping mall in Lokasho village in Aomori prefecture. 
the same name, Contact Brother, uh, for AI Brother, is used for this one. The flock mascot is also there. There are books, chairs, tables, and children's play equipment. But it is unclear who or what the con corner is for. Who is in contact? Who is in contact with whom? Next to the contact plaza, there is also a corner called Rokkasho Energy Plaza. There are panels, tables, and brochures. Next to it is a game corner with some ordinary stores around it. Not many people are interested in the exhibit. The city installed type of nuclear power plant visitor center is intermediate between a typical visitor center and a stealth one. Its directory connection to nuclear power is more obscure than a typical one, and it is more ambiguous about who it is for and what it aims to achieve. Now then, we will look at the steel type that I have discovered. The steel type does not clearly show its association with the nuclear power plant. As far as I have seen, I have not encountered any nuclear power plant visitor center similar to the steel type in Europe or the, in the United States. Today, I would like to talk about two steel type visitor centers. One of them is here. It is called Flori, the Museum of Flowers. Uh, it is located near the Shika nuclear power plant in Ishikawa Prefecture, near the Arisu Mansion and the bus run between them. The entrance is like a European mansion or a hotel. I understand it is a very splendid, splendid building, but I have no idea what kind of facility it is. There is a large space with a glass greenhouse. Greenhouses are sometimes attached to nuclear power plants. This is because building a greenhouse using waste heat from a nuclear power plant is a common idea. The interior of the greenhouse is maintained as a garden. It is not a botanical garden because there are no explanatory boards for individual plants. There is also a pagoda and a well-maintained garden outside the greenhouse. The purpose of the facility and its operator are nuclear. Unclear, so not nuclear. <laughs> No exhibits in the facility are directly related to the nuclear power plant. I later discovered that the Flori was a kind of event hall. They say that it is popular with cosplayers. Now here is a family of uh, capybaras bathing in the hot spring. Uh, they say that here is spa house Rokapoka. And this is also a steel type of nuclear power plant visitor center. Spa House Lokkapokka is located in Lokkasho village in Aomori prefecture, near the Lokkasho PR center and the uh, reprocessing factory, where the frog mascot lives in. When I visit the Lokkasho PR center, I happen to discover this day spa. Rokkasho village is a typical rural village, far from Aomori city and of also Tokyo. The landscape you can usually see in the village is quiet, calm, and peaceful like this. Here is a facade of the house Rokkapokka. As you can see, it is a very nice facility. I took this photo in 2012 when I visited there several months ago, I found a sign saying it was the 20th anniversary. It means uh, it was opened in uh, 20 years ago. The inside is a typical day spa, as you can find in any region in Japan. 
there is a children's playground and a store in the center aisle. The bats are at the far end of the hall. Here is the entrance to the bats. This is also a typical day spa with separated uh, entrances for men and women. Here is the inside of the large bus for men. There are several bus clubs and it is very spacious and bright. As a reader of Walter Benjamin, I could say it looked like a passage in Paris. Here is a Japanese style lounge, a common feature of day supers. Visitors who get out of the bus can take a rest here. There is a Japanese restaurant and a banquet hall in the building. When I visited, even though it was still afternoon, a local fisherman's cooperative held a party with women dressed as geishas. Posters of local singers are displayed. However, there is no exhibit or explanation about the nuclear power plant. So, is Spa House Rokapoka intentionally hiding its connection with nuclear, nuclear power? Probably not. Spa House Rokapoka is a kind of nuclear power plant vista center, which is a fact that all locals know. I learned about Spa House Rokapoka because they offered discount coupons at the Rokkasho PR Center. Rokkasho Gennen Kikaku is a company uh, in Rokkasho Village. Uh, directly operates Rokkasho PR Center and the Spa House Rokkapoka. Here is their website. As the name shows, Rokkasho Gennen Kikaku is a subsidiary of Japan Nuclear Fuel. So everyone in the area knows why such a luxurious day spa facility exists in a rural area. Spa House Rokkapoka uh, get the most visitors in the village. In one year, there were 136,000 visitors. That accounts for 58% of the tourists visiting the village. Spa House Rokkapoka is the biggest tourist attraction for the village, and Rokkasho PL Center has the third largest number of visitors. It would be unthinkable to lose it. Let's summarize the stereotype. Finding a connection between the stereotype and the nuclear power plant is difficult. The stereotype has a vague purpose. However, it attracts a large visitor, even repeater as well, than the regular nuclear power plant visitor centers. The stereotype indicates that the concept of a nuclear power plant visitor center is slightly spreading. So how do we think a steel type like a day spa functions as a nuclear power plant visitor center? It is not so much about knowledge or education, uh, but rather about making people in depopulated areas accept the national nuclear policy on the physical level through pleasure. This understanding is probably correct in some meanings, but I think might be an overestimation because it is based on the assumption that the stereotype still focuses on propaganda. This assumption may be crumbling from the inside out. Nuclear power plant visitor centers may no longer be that faithful to their mission of nuclear propaganda. Rather, they may be more interested in how to perpetuate themselves. The existence of the stereotype may suggest this. If so, 
we can cut into the structure of nuclear discourse from such a twisted uh, status of a nuclear power plant visitor centers. Uh, here is a selected bibliography. And thank you for your attention. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Hajime, uh, Professor Hasegawa, for that really stimulating uh, talk. Um, so at this point, we're going to move into the, the question and answer um, section of the talk. Um, those of you on Zoom, feel free to use the Q&A function of the, um, of the program, and I'll um, ha be happy to pull questions from there. Also, and then folks here uh, in the room, you'll see um, on your tables these little um, these little discs that have a red ring around them. If you'd like to speak, those are microphones. If you'd like to speak, you can touch them and they'll turn on and you can ask your question that way. Um, so yeah.